Okay, so let's first start by checking the actual resolution of our reference image or the floor plan. So this is going to be 826 by 799. So I'm going to go here in 3ds Max and I'm going to draw a plane. And once again, this is going to be 826 by 799 and I'm going to type this in. So 826 by 799. And at this point, uh, next up, what we have to do is we can basically just drag and drop the floor plan right onto our plane. And now we can basically go ahead and maximize the tub view here by clicking this toggle, right? And then now what I want to do, I'm going to click on wireframe and I'll turn this into default shading. And then I will press the G key to turn off the grid. And now we have the floor plan uh, without any distortion applied to it. However, one thing that we need to take care of is to actually put this in the right scale. So this door right here is supposed to be 90 centimeters. And I can go ahead and I can draw a box right there. So for example, something like this. So I'm going to type in at width 90. And now this is a lot smaller. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use a move tool. I will align it right to this corner. And then I'm going to select our image. I will go here to the hierarchy tab and I will press effect pivot only. And then I will move the pivot right onto the corner here. Uh, firstly, I will turn on the snap toggle and I will toggle it right onto the corner of our box. And then I will turn off the effect pivot only and I will actually use the scale tool, right? So I'm going to click here and now I'm going to scale it. So the actual door is 60 centimeters and now we have the floor plan up to scale. Next up, we'll go ahead and we will draw the walls. So I'm going to go right here and I will go to the splines and I will use the line tool and I will start from this side to over here, by the way. And for every opening, I like to draw two vertices, but in this instance, we will not capture the door. So I'm not going to do that, but I will do that for the window opening. So something like this. And then we will close off uh, the spline. Now, as you can see, this line right here is not uh, vertical or at a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to go here at the modifier and I'm going to select the vertice. And then with the move tool, I'm going to move it and align it just like this. Cool. So now next up, I'm also going to draw the interior of the wall. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click create a line and I will start from here to over here. And then this one will probably stop right around here and something like this. Okay, so now we can close this off. So we can close the spline. Now, in order for this to actually turn into a wall and be extruded, what we need to do is that these lines actually need to be um, in a perfect 90 degree angle and they need to be fully aligned. So I'm gonna use the move tool once again. I'm gonna make sure that we're gonna snap this point with one another. And then it also needs to be snapped to here. So in fact, we need to modify this instead. And then this also needs to be parallel to this vertice. And then these two should be parallel just like this. So now we can select these and then we can go to modify. We can add an extrude modifier. And now if we go to the perspective view by pressing the P key, we can basically extrude this upwards for about 280 centimeters. And now we have added all the walls around here. Next up, what we can actually do is we can go ahead and turn on the wire framing. So this is the wireframe override. And what we will do here as well is that we will add an added poly um, modifier. We will click this and then we'll click over here and we will go ahead and press bridge. And now this will create the opening for our window. Now we can go back to default shading and what we can actually do here is pretty easy. So what we can do here is actually pretty simple. We can just go back to shapes here and we can go here at windows and we can actually input a sliding window. So it would be something like this. However, uh, this has the completely wrong orientation. What I will do is I will turn the angle snap toggle and I will rotate it to something like this. Let's do nine degrees and let's actually move it this way. Okay, cool. So now we also have the sliding window here. Next up, what we will do is let's just add a quick box underneath here. 
something like this and then let's add a box on top as well so now we have added the box uh, we can also just move this out of the way for now uh, what I would like to do here is actually uh, in this uh, window section I would go ahead and do an edit poly modifier so I will click edit poly and I will select these polygons the actual glass and I would want this a completely different material and I'm going to select those and I will click detach and now I will click out and as you can see now these will I will add a completely different material because this will make it a lot easier for me later on to apply the glass compared to everything else that we have here. Okay, cool. So at this point, I already have gotten all the assets ready, which by the way, you can download down below. And I'm just going to merge the file right here on 3ds Max. And basically now I will just move this uh, over here for a second. So now let's move it over here. Uh, let's rotate it a bit. Let's actually place it right inside our room. And now we have it fully furnished. So next up, what I will do is I will go here at viewports and I will make this a uh, basically split it into halves. This I'll keep it as perspective. And uh, what I will do is I will go ahead at the cameras and I will add a Corona camera from here to actually the line right there. And at the view here, I will go to cameras, Corona camera one, I'll turn this to default shading. Uh, and now let me modify its height. Let's select this, let's move it over here. What I will do next is I will go back to this view. Uh, let's go to Corona camera one and I will modify this to have a larger field of view to something like this. Next up, I can go ahead and I can add a box from over here. I will just add the curtain cornice. Uh, and I uh, will go right here. Let's go to perspective. Okay, so now let's just see at what point uh, our view is. We're going to turn on the Corona frame buffer. And as you can see, the exposure is too high now. Uh, it's probably going to need to be somewhere around here, but we're also going to uh, go ahead and tweak out the um, actual intensity of the sunlight there. And as you can see, we also need to apply all of the materials here. In order to do that, we could probably also do that in uh, post or with a light mix. Now, in order to tweak down the actual Azure Eye, that's quite easily. We can go here at the material editor and right here we can pro uh, Okay, so this is how the render is looking as of now. We're obviously going to tweak the materials because they're all super messy now. And we are also going to play around with the post-production on the lighting and probably something with the light mix as well. Okay, so for everything in the materials here, uh, we can easily use the pre-made Corona material library. So I'm gonna go right here. Let's start off with the curtains because they play a big role in the actual lighting. So I'm gonna apply that one right there. Uh, let me turn off the uh, frame buffer because that's just going to make everything a lot more heavy for now. Uh, let's take this off. Let's go to wood. Let's find a pine floor. Let's apply right here. Uh, let's go to actual wall. So you go to walls right here. Let's apply a plaster smooth over here, over here. Let's go to metals. Uh, let's apply this. Okay, and then let's go to wood and then we are going to apply a pine mat to the backboard there. Okay, so we have added the materials to the render and this is how it is looking as of now. There are obviously some things that I will still tweak in terms of material maps, uh, lighting balance and um, obviously the floor map as well. So I'm just gonna add a UV map modifier. Okay, so this is how the render is looking as of now. A few tweaks that I would want to make uh, is that I would like to fix the tilt shift on the camera. I'm gonna go to top view. Uh, I'm gonna turn this to wireframe. I'm gonna choose the camera right there. And what I would like to do at the camera is automatic vertical tilt. And then I'll go to rendering. I will go to render setup. I'm gonna leave the output size in 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna go back to the camera view that we have here. 
and I'm going to go ahead and click render. Okay, so you probably have noticed that in this channel, I only mostly post videos on real time rendering engines. And that's because usually the bar is too high to use Corona or V-Ray and it is hard to access a high-end computer with high waiting times and really expensive CPUs and other hardware. But I found something which is very interesting which I want to share with you today which is Rebus Farm. This is a rendering farm to which you can outsource the computing power and you do not actually have to render anything on your computer and it is at a super low cost so you could probably do very high-end renders in like a $500 PC or less. So in order to do that, you first of all need to go to the rendering here and at the render setup, what you wanna do is that you basically wanna add a pass limit, that way it doesn't render infinitely, or you can add a time limit. Uh, but I would add a pass limit uh, because that is a lot more efficient since the render engines are a lot faster in Rebus form. So the pass limit, I can just leave it at 100 and then all of the other settings would be configured. And once you have downloaded Rebus form, you basically can open it right here. So you can go ahead and go, for example, at render setup, and you could do the priority st uh, standard, which is 1.2 cent. And then you can also run a render cost estimation, which does just a fast preview of the render just to check how much it would cost you. So we can do a render cost um, calculation here. So for example, now we can just upload our scene to Rebus. We'll click send to Rebus farm and everything will be exported. And now we can go to Rebus uh, right here at our uh, control center. And this is going to be uploaded and we're going to check it in just a second. For every new user in Rebus, you get free 25 render points, which allow you to create and test it out for free because this is super easy. But I think the highest leverage is where you actually create animations where you have a lot of frames and take you days to render in your own PC, even if your PC is high end, because they have farms of GPUs and CPUs that render this, which render a lot quicker than just a normal um, computer at home or at your office. And once this is uploaded, we can basically just click start rendering and then we will have it show up right here in two or three minutes, we'll have the render ready in Rebus. Okay, so this is the render that we got as an output. And obviously this is not fully optimized to look the best as of now, because as you know me, I optimize for efficiency, speed, and the uh, speed to quality ratio, but I'm trying to match something that would take us the same amount of time as in D5 Renscape, and obviously Rebus uh, render helped us uh, with that as well. So now as one of the final steps, I'm gonna upload this here, and I'm going to enhance this render to give it a final touch and just elevate it to a whole different quality. And let's see what we get now. Now, this is the before and this is the after. And in my opinion, this is a huge difference. And by the way, I think the render quality is pretty good compared to the amount of effort and time we put in to something like 3ds Max and Corona, which usually um, requires a lot more time to edit, optimize and modify things manually. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm always used to real time rendering engines and I definitely wanted this to be an experience of efficiency and high speed to quality ratio. So if you want to get the same time to quality ratio and efficiency, go ahead and check out Rebus Farm in the link in the description. You will get 25 Rebus points for absolutely free in the beginning so you can uh, test things out and see how much easier and faster it is to render with 3ds Max and Corona with Rebus Farm. And if you want to watch another tutorial of mine, go ahead and watch the video right here.